Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon for the third in the best of three series against Boosted E-Girl in the Boot Camp Rookie Tournament and uh, my opponent has picked Baltic and I had the counter pick, I picked Baltic Moto and I'm going all in so I have pretty much everything here and my intention was to go mostly up to this section of town and forest and Anna a little bit over on the left hand side as well, ATGM and Recon and I miss Rikro this entire opening <laughs> so just wait for for all of that glorious <laughs> now i'm excited to see what's going to happen oh yeah 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 no, no. so oh yeah sorry we do so also you're playing have... moto right and you're and he's playing um general right yes yeah so i have a salamandra two sokols uh and with me in the recording is osama bin lifton who has been hanging out and giving some good uh good feedback i think on this series i'm um, definitely Someone I recommend learning from if you have the chance and opportunity. And this really broke my heart. Ooh. Two shots, two misses. Third shot, third miss. And what's happening here, I think, is that my Salamandra is just having line of sight broken with that section of trees. So yeah, yeah. All four Kokon M's, no kills. Not one. I'm personally not a fan of the Salamandra, but I know it's, it's not a bad unit. I just... Yeah, I think I just can't get place. much out of it. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, it, I do struggle with that sometimes. And then, if you'll notice, I have two ATGM teams, and the one that was supposed to go left didn't. Okay, so, you wanted to take that that far position. That's kind of tricky because usually they get an ATGM team there very so. early. Yeah, but I mean, mm -hmm. my hope was so all of the stuff that's right here, I had intended for it to be here, sort of coming up this way, avoiding oh, that road. Oh, I see. And what happened was I, I fast moved, I think, to right about this position, maybe, or I, I did oh, directly on the I town. See. And so yeah. so you have the um, the road speed versus off-road disparity, and the game calculated the fastest way was to stay on the road through here, then cut over, mm -hmm. instead of what I had wanted, which was to get up to about here on the road, and then cut over directly. Um, which so is yeah. which is kind of funny. This is, seems like it's working out for you so far. Well, you well, say that. Okay, I may have too soon. Oh, you unloaded everything. Okay. I did. This was sheer panic. Um, so in hindsight, I should have kept things in the KTs. I should have been moving this stuff back and away from the engagement instead of trying to screen. I mean, here. sometimes just fast move right into it. So, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm not joking. Like sometimes the uh, the aggressiveness. Um, you kind of saw that like. Uh, there wasn't really too much there. No, if I had been able to handle the Wilks, but both of my ATGM teams were shot first, which yeah. was some really nice control from Boosted. So getting the Wilks on the right targets and denying that long range support for a while, and then just an MI-17 just ending all of my ambitions. So uh, yeah, that's how that opener went. I have a single Erikois on either side, one in Boris, one in Fetter, and I'm just desperately calling stuff in because in my head, I had, you know, okay, these Wilks, the Pion, all of this stuff, because we've seen a lot from Boosted over into Fetter, is going to go right through this section of woods. Mm -hmm. uh, so I needed the ATGM teams to go here. Uh, they were already bought by the time that engagement happened. And, and that's a really important part of the tree line you don't want to lose. Yeah, exactly. Just because once you lose that, it's, it's pretty tricky to take that back. Yeah, you lose your reinforcing line from here because of the slope. So mm -hmm. every time you come down here, you just sort of get shot from a firing concave in the woods. It's really hard to deal with. Um, I did also, by the way, have an Ito 90 and two ROMs, and if you'll notice, the Musty on this side hasn't been killed yet, and I was paying attention to that, and the XA-180 here hasn't been killed yet, we did also get a nice kill in the woods on that side, and we spot boosted Erikois as well, so remember, this is Baltic versus Baltic, but my infantry are going to be usually higher veterancy because I'm Moto, mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to exploit on that side. We do actually take the town here, oddly enough. Just Raskus Did you buy a CV for your two-pointer, by the way? I did yet? not. I don't okay. know. And my opponent has. Mm -hmm. um, which very much, I mean, I'm losing tech at plus two. You cannot maintain that for forever. I don't think it's a great idea to start with two on CV on two-pointer because on this map, it's so easy for the opponent to just buy one and get it on the two-pointer really quickly, too. Yeah. You're not really taking that much advantage. You're not getting that much of an advantage, but. I don't Not teach that that's what's own. happening at the moment. So I, I pulled out more ATGM teams. I've, these are carrying um, Kart and Yekri in KRKKs. One in KRKKs, one in Musties. And I'm trying to just make sure I don't lose this position. Because, I mean, there was a Pion. There were two M1 Wilks. There's a lot. And you, know, you mm -hmm. see Topaz as well. And this, I think, was a bit of a mistake from Boosted. So those tanks I thought were coming this way are just hanging out in Anna. And yeah. I, I don't really know what they're doing here. He's trying to probably clear out as but much as he can. But then where's the infantry? 
right? Uh, probably on the way, I assume. Ah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> In the meantime, Pechota get absolutely wrecked by an MI-17, and I love these PT-76Bs. I think for 15 points, I mean, it's not amazing performance, but it's good optics, and, you know, two frontal armor, which, that's the important breakpoint. Um, so we'll oh, there's see. his infantry, actually. Yeah. He, he wants uh, the forest here. Ranico, Ranico, Topaz, Ito-90, Panzer Yekri, and yeah, I'm going to lose the MI-17 here, but this is why I'm getting ATGM teams up and in that section. And then my Iroquois have just gone around, so his Iroquois were right here, and mine are going to take the high road, <laughs> so we'll return to them later. Um, this was interesting too, so Ranico Yekri spotted, but not being engaged because I don't have a long-range tertiary. Mm -hmm. And what I was told by, um, I think it was the Mint Jellyman, who for those of you guys who don't know him, is a really wonderfully skilled player, is that uh, if I had opened up right now, the Ranico would probably have won. Um, but for, I mean, because they can't see the Iroquois, it's going to be potentially a little bit of a different engagement there. So Carton Yekri unloaded, Musty's unloaded, uh, well, yeah, sitting back there. And then I'm trying to get spikes, I'm trying to get some recon forward, Carton Yekri, and just making sure to keep the KRKKs and Musty's behind the Carton Yekri until they're necessary. And now you have the Renico moving over. Open ground, though, against Iroquois? Oh, uh, that's a, it's a yeah. meat grinder. Yeah, it is. Actually, and, not as uneven as I thought it would be, and I know they don't have an, uh, you know, an MG. But, yeah, I mean, if they had an MG, it would have been even better, but we're still, I mean, 6 strength to 2. Yeah, And then okay, when you get bad. CQC, that Yadamatic from the Iroquois is going to go even even higher uh, for its damage out point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I see a lot of Carton Yakari, but there's kind of an issue here, and that is their AT is okay, but if he decides to drive those Wilkes in and support some sort of shock infantry in the forest, you may be in a tough spot. Yeah, and, and this is something that's... Um, I think it just comes from an over-reliance on Carton Yekri is sort of like a pet favorite unit. Because uh, mm -hmm. you can see he's doing exactly that. So the M1 will oh, okay, up. Yeah. <laughs> I have a spike team. Um, uh, not a good position, though. Oh, maybe, but... The, the tree line that is kind of in the middle of their firing line is... Yeah, does so make it a little tricky. This was thick. I was actually... I was microing that unit at the time because I saw the Wilkes coming up and I really wanted that shot. But this section of forest right here is just thick enough, as we said, to block line of sight. But, I mean, we still fend them back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it was still a good shot. And we were just cleaning out infantry, so the KRKKs with their frag launchers. I only wish I'd pulled them back a little bit, because I really don't want the Pion and the Wilk to potentially be in range. And then, this is hard, right? So BMP2s, Topaz... Um, yeah, this is where the Carton Yukari starts to suffer a little bit. Yeah, because... It can deal with it, it's not too bad, but it's... um. Well, one of the yeah. groups got sort of stunned and panicked, and so I'm actually about to split the Carton Yekri, I think, here in a second. But yeah. I have the second group, I have the Musty Trucks, and these guys hit pretty hard. So that was sort of my hope there. And then on the left, Boosted is attacking in to CC. So XA-180 is trying to get over there just to pull off the guns, the KT is away from my CC. And I, I don't think Boosted thought I had anything in this town. Yeah, so, I think the first thing you, ha you should have done when you got that the CC in the town was put an ATGM team in there. It really would have helped, that's um, for sure. Because, I mean, this is going to be a hard yeah. fight. Because um, yeah. you could control so much important ground just by having an ATGM team there, along with a KRKK, too. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, the ATGM team kills the IFVs, kills the transports, and then the KRKK mulches anything in the open ground. So Hawk Bomber coming in. But this was actually... This was... I did not expect my CC to hold here. Um really impressed by how they, they did. I don't know if it was a bit of a fluke, or if it was just because of a higher veterancy, I don't really know. We also well, did it kind of looked like armor. the and it, it kind of looked like the KT was shooting at something else, and then... Yeah, um, the KT was up. looking at my, my vehicles. Yeah, uh, and then this is actually kind of important too, like, in, in just in general with Wargame, um, you see the, K, the KT powerful unit on its own, but sometimes killing the infantry might be more beneficial than focusing on killing the KT itself, because without the infantry, the KT can't do anything. Yeah, and you can see that if right he wants here, to drive so like Bushmaster see, he's, 2. Yeah, he's going to die. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, this is also, I think it's a good lesson on recon as well. Like, just, the KT can't see. If there is recon infantry here, they might be able, is that close enough to no, pass spot? No, unless you're firing, but mm. uh, they wouldn't be able to see you just outright. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I take that back then, but... Yeah. Yeah, so my strategy at the time, I still, I haven't capped Dimitri, Boosted is still taking at plus two, now 244 points in. Yeah, that's a little way. dangerous. Like, if you see, especially in any of the two-pointer maps, if you see someone buy a two-pointer, they're taking plus two on you, you gotta buy one immediately. Yeah, so my One whole... plus tick, not so big of a deal. Two plus tick, 
really starts to hurt. Yeah, 30 points a minute goes goes very, very quick. And well, I mean, we're yes. only 10 points in, they're halfway on score, and, and more than that. So right now, here's the uh, Command Infantry buy on an MI-17. But before then, I was just trying to, you know, we had a couple of really good engagements here. And I really was trying to capitalize on those successes on the ground. So maybe not the best justification for it, but that was at least the train of thought. Ericois, by the way, did also take out an Alouette. And nice. I think wasn't exactly spotted at the time, because if you looked at the... Oh, I'm not going to show it right now, but uh, having looked at this one from Boosted's perspective, there were no immediate base defense buys in response to that. Um, mm -hmm. Which, that's usually the sign. Like You put out that sort of stuff as tripwires, which is very nice, but then you have to sort of respond when it gets killed, or you lose the, the benefit of it. So these guys have been spotted. Um, that unit has died. That will send you an alert as well. Um, so, I mean... All of There's the... also a big ass fire near your <laughs> yeah near exactly, your base. but I mean it's also it's hard right. So if we if we take a look at that side of the field, um, and you're playing up here, mm -hmm. you can't see that except from the mini map. So you would have seen you can see the blue on that side, and uh, boosted would have seen that for just a moment when he was firing. But you can't see the fire if you're microing up in here, and that's where boosted is is currently microing most of their units. Um, so I understand like it. I've made that mistake too before where yeah, you know, watching the replay. Yeah. I think it also like what's also really important is everybody uh, in general just you should always zoom out uh you know really wide out every once uh however I however, usually do it once a minute or so. Oh really? Yeah, pretty pretty frequently. Like kind of like what you what you're doing here like probably this far out's good cuz you really want to be able to observe what's eye. going on. Yeah, cuz if you get if you're microing on a specific lane or area for more than a minute you're Probably, probably doing something wrong, or you're you're maybe you're doing a push. But if you're not doing a specific like big push or anything, especially in a one v one, so like some multiplayer maps, it seems like you can afford to go in a little bit closer if it's just like three lanes, three players kind of thing. Well, yeah, in team games you can afford to do that because you've got such a narrow lane, but not in one v ones. One v ones, you're you know you're kind of accountable for everything that goes on in the map. By the way, it's a lot of space to cover. Best tank in the best game. Tank, yeah, fighting. best tank in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost as good as a T-62Ds, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, basically a BU when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, we're, we're applying a lot of pressure. You have now seen a couple of base defense buys from Boosted, but they're going the wrong way. And a little bit of luck. So the Eroquois Y3 from Boosted missed their first Igla and hit their second Igla, but the KT is going to be able to survive late. that. Yeah, exactly. So my pylons moving forward, KT's moving forward. I'm I like this trying. pressure here because yeah. yeah, he's trying to he's trying to get your 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 kind of your Fedor side, but uh, you know you're actually doing a pretty good job of applying pressure somewhere else. And this is something I actually wanted to ask you about too, because you know one of the things that I've heard before and has definitely helped is 80-20. Put 80 percent of your forces somewhere, 20 percent another. Make sure you can get that push going in um, successfully in one location. If you spread out too much, it's bad. But then I'm very much playing wide here, and I don't really know like, moto necessities or. Well, yeah, I think for for opener, you usually want to have it pretty focused. I don't know about exactly eighty twenty, and it obviously depends on map and rule and, of thumb. Uh, play style, rule but, of thumb. Yeah, but uh, you know, you don't. I, I don't usually like to open evenly, and again, this depends on play style because uh, I like to have kind of sprinkle stuff around on the flanks, but do a strong push somewhere. Gotcha. So I did want to show this just for a second here. This is Boosted's perspective. And the scope R3 Ooh, is, not is spotted. Sorry? Is, is it inside the tree it line? It is inside the tree line, and it was blinking oh. before. It wasn't spotted. This is a big panic button. Right? So if you have your base CV and it's inside a forest or a building and it should be unspotted and you see it go solid bar, something is very, very wrong and needs to be <laughs> solved very quickly. So... I mean, just looking at this right now, there's Pachota yeah. right here guarding it, and there's a Topos behind, so odds are it's not in this section. It could be up top, I guess, but that would be a little bit difficult. Odds are it's somewhere over here. And in fact, yep. my, my Recon Infantry, I think, were right up top there. Probably, yeah, right up there. And yeah. here's okay. why you want to solve that problem quickly. Oh, there's a plane. Okay. Yeah, so Syria took out the, uh, the command vehicle here, and I, I also wanted to show this from Boosted's perspective, just because the response to this was really impressive. Like I, I had never seen a response like this uh, to losing your base CV. Immediately picks up the CV from Anna, and you might be wondering, you know, okay, well, why Anna instead of Boris? This one is on wheels. I really agree with this, because the Eroquois are right here. 
Yeah. And if yeah. you don't have that position secured, I could have a couple more things. And if you're going back along that road, that's risky. But not even walking it back actually packs it up into a truck and is going to be bringing that back and using that to recap center. So just really nice, really fast response. And uh, the Ericois, I mean, I turned on the Apollos, we get the kill, and then the MI-17 I failed to kill, rearms. So sad end of the Ericois um, because of the MI-17, but very much worthwhile, uh, even just for the Pion kill, let alone spotting that CV. So back to my perspective, this sort of seemed like the moment of opportunity. So you can see Fetter is capped, moving Cart and around the side, CC on this side, Pion on this side, realizing that there's nothing seemingly in this section of town, and that my opponent has to be distracted. So Center's decap, that's the immediate thing, and everything else, like this Wilk is spotted as well, and Smoke is now coming onto it, but that took a little bit of time. And yep. my opponent, I mean, both of the other games in the series, I think playing very, very, very much a nice game. And here we have a couple of mistakes. So. Center, decaps, had to be recapped, no um, no response then to having that CV sort of undefended in Boris, and it sort of just, it compounded. And I, I felt kind of bad too, because it's, I, if I was in boosted shoots there, I'm pretty sure the same thing would have happened to me. Um, it's just one of those things where, yeah, I don't know, recovering from your opponent being in your base is, is hard. Um, and when I play Moto, I can, I can be a little bit annoying. So, yeah, this is true. Of moto, like you're playing all over the map. I, I see you're, you're you're obviously pushing this side, but I think uh, you're you're you've got some shocks on the far right. Yeah, your car, yeah, your car, your car. You're also doing a flank, which um, uh, this is a bit of a mistake, I think, as well. I ended up having them into this section of woods, but what you said earlier with their bad AT, I probably should have gone right for the town and fetter. Um, yeah, they're more of a town fighter. They can kill light transports, but probably I wouldn't say any terribly effective against like armed. Yeah, and DC 15 strength is also really sticky in towns as well. It's really hard to get rid of. Um, oh yeah, with... once they're in a town block, I mean, that's just a lot of HE to, you're going to have to pump through to, to get get them out. Right, right. But I'm trying to I would to even sure... start to probe and push up on this Fedor side that you have too. Yeah. Preventing them from ever thinking about pushing your tree line again. Right, that, that definitely would have been a good thing. The reason I didn't at the time is because of the Cart and limitations. And that's maybe a good argument for yeah. Ranico as well. If these were Ranico, I would have felt a little bit better because we've seen, I think there is still a Pion somewhere around here. Um, and maybe even a Wilk. And the Cart yep. will die probably to both of those. Maybe not against the Pion, uh, depending on the line of sight, I guess. Uh, the Pion does have a little bit lighter armor. Um, but the Wilk will take him out. So that's why I was being a little bit cautious with these guys. But, I mean, if your front line has limitations for 50 points plus the transport cost, that's a problem. And if the solution to it is, what, 5 points more? No, 10 points more expensive? It seems pretty worth it to me, at moments like that. So, um, CC doing pretty well here. I brought the KT up and the Super Pumas, and the Super Pumas are actually going to go right ahead of the KT after this engagement to sort of try to draw uh, any anti-air fire that was in the area. CC just pushing up, and I'm trying to lock down Boris as well, because if I can lock down Fetter, if I can lock down Boris, I still have units here. And that sort of becomes a full court press kind of thing, right? Like holding Federer, yep. holding Boris, actively pushing here, in the here again. On. Like I think you, just, you got us what, for, for especially for Moto. Obviously, you're not very strong, uh, so if they push into you, it's it's kind of tricky for you to defend. You you know you don't have a lot of high armored units. ATGM sprinkling ATGMs around positions you own just makes their lives completely like a lot more miserable. Like think about Boris. Um, you've got if you got ATGMs just to the south. Uh, or sorry, the bottom right-hand corner of the S. Yeah, right there. I think you just highlighted it. I can't see your mouse, but I think you just highlighted this You've got something the there. You've got another one maybe on uh, closer to his spawn where your Super Pumas are flying over, looking gotcha. down that road. You know, it gets very annoying. And again, it, it slows him down a lot. And the more you slow him down a lot, that also means you've got a lot more time to do moto things and push somewhere else. <laughs> I was definitely reaching my micro limit as well here. So you can see my Raskas in Kurima just stop right outside this town completely unintentional um it's just this is a really spread map and i mean this is what we we're talking about oh, earlier my carton yep. yep there's the wilk i can't kill it that wilk is just gonna i mean 99 percent chance to hit shots because of range scaling into cart yeah he's just gonna walk over the carton yeah yeah and i mean we're not gonna let that stand forever because at, at this point i do have um points on the board advantage mm -hmm. so i mean i'm only taking plus one we still have 20 minutes left so with 20 minutes left a plus one's good enough but by now, I'm, I'm 
probably safe to say I have about a 300 point advantage on the ground. Uh, and that's after the disaster that was my initial opener. So we're using it to apply pressure here. Musty's coming up, Yekri, Raskis, and Koryima, uh, the Pion as well. And my idea here was if I can draw the attention of that Wilk with Cart and Yekri, which is expensive to do that with, uh, and then kill it with the Pion, that was maybe a solution. Uh, my mm -hmm. spikes have also run out of ammunition, so I'm trying to resupply, but uh, this was very much the edge of my micro abilities. <laughs> no, I think it's. I mean, it is showing a little bit, but I think it's good because you're just. You're attacking on so many fronts. Yeah. Um, this did not work out well. What is that? So these are BMP2s. Oh, okay, there's okay. one here. There's a second one right there. My cart and Yakri aren't quite in range to take the first one down. And I responded a little bit too late and then missed the first shot. Yeah, their, their max range accuracy is already pretty poor, so you really have to make sure they're fighting like in cities or in deep forest. Yeah, and I never really thought about that, but I think... Because the range, the range scaling, too. Yeah, I never really thought scaling. about range scaling on, on with shock or line infantry. Like, you don't... That's a tank thing, right? But apparently it does apply to... Uh, to no, it's very important for launchers. Yeah, but we just got hawked. Ooh. Yeah, sadness. <laughs> It do be like that. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, Hawk Bombers are really good for that reason, and this was a complete waste as well. So my Avia comes out, I'm trying to get a little bit of revenge here on oh, those units. Was... <laughs> Pure spite, just just not, just not unthinking revenge. Psychological keep... damage. Yeah, yeah, and you know, this Emotional is why you, you keep your, uh, you keep your oh. hand off of the plane tab, because I just lose it oh, for yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. And we do get the, uh, sorry, we do get, do get the Wilkes. My Pion did exactly what I wanted, got a side shot on them. <laughs> And because of that, I can go in and take out that Ito. So, I guess that's some silver lining. But and I see that push middle seems like yep. it's going pretty well too. Yep, CC Raskis and Koryima, Musties. These guys, I mean, the M39s are kind of trash, but Musties can shoot at infantry once they get into a town. I, so, I don't know if you're pronouncing them right, but it seems like you're actually pronouncing them right. So, I have no idea. Uh, that's probably like the first time like I've heard it pronounced like correctly. <laughs> well, I I'm so I am not Finnish. I have a layman's understanding of Russian, um, which I've been informed I speak fairly accented, but not necessarily always entirely embarrassingly. <laughs> so this is just my best approximations. That's all I can do. Um, in this, um, the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around learning that language is just how many consonants are in a row. Like, that's just not something that you have yeah. in English, and you can see it in this unit name. Yeah. I, it, just, it just looked like somebody like, mashed a keyboard, honestly, yeah. for me. <laughs> I mean, it's also here, like, Erokro's Yekri. It's just... I don't think I say the last part right with the Yekri, so if you are Finnish and you understand that, please just let me know. And, yeah. Anyway, back to the game. Salamandra, bit of a waste. I should have known with the Erokro's Yekri here not to push that up. But I was hoping My now with a follow up on that with the MI-17, lose line of sight. Like it's just, it's rough. Um, and this is why I wish I still had my Avia, because look at how far forward we are. There's Ranico here, there's yeah, AK that there. that would have been a good Avia target. It has to be like right here. And if I could have gone in on that with the Avia, I would have gone from plus one to plus three. That seems worthwhile. So, uh, mistakes were made, regrets were had, but... Uh, well, that's the that's the learning process again, so we'll hopefully just not do it next time. Uh, now my spike teams have been resupplied and these T-72s are going to be very, very sad. And uh, I think this is a bit of a problem that Boosted had later on in the game, was keeping Recon alive. Because I take yeah, a I lot think. of close-in engagements. Um, and I think a lot of it has also come down to micro. It doesn't look like T any of the T-72s are being micro at all. They're just fast moving to, or I probably just called in. Yeah, maybe so. Because I think so the micro you're is over spreading. Here. Yeah, you're spreading uh, boosted eagle very, very thin everywhere, and it's really starting to show. These T72s are just going down pretty, pretty quickly. And pretty I'll, I'll happily trade them for some Raskas and Kurima. These are 15 points a piece. These are 40 points a piece. Like, yep, that seems worthwhile. And the one that got away, I mean, there's always one that gets it's away. Not like he's in good shape. Yeah. It's... Yeah. It panicked six strength instead of ten, and then I have two pions up on this side that are more than happy to take that fight and. Maybe a little bit of a waste of points here, but I wanted to. So Fetter is countercapped, and that was really a little bit galling because had I done something properly over here in Fetter, I would have been able to deny that, and I just wanted to make sure that didn't happen. So we are. Oh, I take it back. CC this far forward. Yeah, like I, I think the fact you're not taking any ATGMs, ATGM fire over there, T55s, that should probably give you a green light to maybe try try to push into Fedor. So I think oh, they also spot the scopes. Interesting. HH10. 
sad okay. spot. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It was in the trees. It was in the trees here. Um, the yeah, but fives found it. You can just hide it behind the uh, the buildings, and it's probably a much better. Yeah. So buildings do block cheap. line of sight for that, right? So if uh, if the if it was right here, for example, we'd have buildings blocking in the front and side. I like that one warehouse with those six round silos, but see, uh, see. top right hand corner here. Yeah, and if you have a, if it has a weapon, your CV has a weapon, you could fire pause, do like kind of just move your mouse to 360, and huh. you know see the lines of sight. That's usually how you check. Um, That's something. So I've been meaning to do that as well. I I almost want to load into some maps sometimes without an opponent, and just take units around and and you know fire pause. Different yes, things and learn see. the lines of sight. It's very very important. Uh, I know Jelly, and I can even show you some light, like specific uh, positions uh, to take, uh, especially for a lot of these on, on a lot of these maps that are really, really cheeky. And <laughs> having that knowledge under your belt, especially for Punchbowl, you know, on the previous map we were looking at, yeah, it so would it would go very game. long. Yeah, it'll go go a very long way. Yeah, I, I know there's one cheeky spot, at least one cheeky spot you can do on the two pointers where ATGMs can fire entirely across at your opponent's reinforcing lane. <laughs> Yeah, um, yep. So I've always wanted to take advantage of that, and then I, for some reason, it just, I never quite managed it. Now this was a problem. Oh, now he's got AT gems. Yeah, and now my micro is elsewhere as well. So I just took that one to the face. The pions are not yet moving, uh, and they really should be. Like, eh, it was annoying. I was trying, I think, to get. I mean, you're pretty far pushed up. You're taking two plus. It's... Yeah. And we're overtaking now on points, so three hundred and nine yeah. to three thirteen. I would say you could have probably reinforced Boris a little more. Um, you know, there's, you had a lot more opportunity to probably dig in with a little more infantry with not a lot of investment, but it, it's still, it's, so that's it's actually on the way. Up. We have KTs going up there with, I believe just the 90. Um, and their intention is to go up and sort of lock this side down. Uh, because I don't know, I, I figured the attack would come through here or here. I didn't think they go all the way around at this stage in the game, but even if they did, I have a PT-76B that would hopefully die before my command infantry. <laughs> and I don't know, I, die for your country <laughs> exactly so charioteers Ranico Yekri, they will kill uh, my yeah. Eroquois pretty hard yeah yeah that was I think at this of... point you can just say hey okay I'm gonna just let that part of Boris go I'm gonna just push Anna and Fedor or whatever well, believe cause... it or not we actually hold it here uh, really okay yeah, yeah so you'll <laughs> stick That's <it> around interesting. <laughs> but um, wow yeah so Hawk Bombers on this side I've lost my uh, Pions and I don't know. I mean, I, infantry this far forward, I didn't think Fetter was going to be capped again. Um, but it did take a lot of my attention away. So I Where's your anti air on that part of the map, actually? Oh, this <laughs> side. Uh, it's mostly any. just I've been driving ROMs back and forth, and I really should have bought some more ROMs and have them over here. But I'm relying on Air Koizekri for anti air, which is only good against helicopters and then not all the time. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Bit of a mistake, but I was just trying to buy such aggressive things on the ground um, to hopefully never give my opponent a chance to really breathe. Um, and that's what I'm doing right here as well. So the Raskis and Kurima, Musty is really far forward. We spot the Pion, and my Syria is diving it, because I think we handled most of the AA at this point. It's a, what, 75 point kill? Mm -hmm. And it denies recon to that entire push. So I think this is also really a good example of, uh, again, we kind of talk about like, your your micro budget especially as a player knowing your limitations of micro um this uh, uh i guess e boost ego retaking fedor um was and then we clearly, have combat on the left too yeah it was clearly not as focused there's a lot of units coming in and just kind of dying on the reinforcement and you're just picking it apart just because you're battling all over the map um <laughs> i think uh that that's i think would really want you the game because that, that in terms of material loss uh, boost ego will probably took several hundred points at this by, by this point in time uh just because of uh you know you doing your playing all over the map and um being annoying having, and, and motorized yeah, being annoying and boosted you girl miss my growing so much yeah well i mean it's it's a it's a hard thing to to feel confident about doing that's for sure so i i maintain i, I played all three of these games scared and i really think um particularly with the first two games boosted very nearly won the set and was really just a, a very amazing player. So I was happy to play against him here in the closing couple of seconds. I do also uh, counter cap Anna. And seeing mm -hmm. that is going to prompt a GG from Boosted. Because that's going to put me into plus three. 
And then also the Ranico Yekuri dying on this side of the Pion and KTs in the open ground. It's sort of just going to be uh, a little bit of a, a last hurrah that failed for that side of the board. So a couple of really good games. And my thanks as well to Osama bin Lifton for the commentary with me and sort of for some really good constructive criticism. I do recommend you check out both Blitz Wars uh, videos and channel as well as the... Um, the discord that they have for some good games with some really solid people so uh 2750 kills 20 uh 2070 losses yeah, and that's pretty good kd yeah i was pretty happy about this particularly i think we started off down probably about 300 to 400 points because of the opener so coming back uh that that much on material uh, I, losses, I didn't think he lost that much I, um it could so, be demoralizing it might feel like it, it might felt feel like, like, that. It felt like yeah that. yeah, yeah that's right. the important but i felt like it but um yeah. Standout units, the spikes did really well. I mean, a bunch of T seventy two kills, some KTs, things like that. Um, and then I think it's mostly like the Erkois Ekri did very well. Um mm -hmm. and believe it or not, Syria, Wilk, Pion, I think I had a different Syria as well. I don't know, just a lot of units really exploiting their roles. So ATGMs with lots of kills, recon tanks killing mainline tanks. <laughs> it just a lot of things went right that game, and it felt uh, it was a really satisfying one to close off the set for uh, for me personally. So, yeah, I thought you played that really well. Thank you, sir. And you could clearly see that um, you were really pushing uh, your opponent's uh, micro to to their limits. So, well, that's all uh, we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around. We'll see you again real soon.